Oh, they're they're dynamite. You've got a good day, eh? It's a good day. Is it cleared up? Uh, we're speaking to... You can introduce yourself. Maybe that's easier. Well, I'm Reverend Brother Walter A. Tucker. I came from Hamilton as the Minister of Plenty Potentiary for our church to make a documentary of what's happening in the hemp movement here in, here in British Columbia and to make contact with some of our missions across Canada. And what is your group's philosophy? Do you have like a... A philosophy or principles that you live by or believe in? Oh goodness gracious, yes. <laughs> we, we, uh, the church originally was based on the principle that you don't hurt yourself and you don't hurt other people. And that you, that you live as close to the teachings of God. Now God, I know that you might say, well God is God and God is every, every, you know, a lot of other names. God is called by a lot of names and he's worshipped in a lot of ways. Uh, one of the basic tenets in our church is that God is God, and no matter what you call call God, God is God. We don't even know whether God is male or female. We don't argue that point or think about it, because to argue that point is to detract from the idea that it's a powerful being whom, to whom we owe, I guess, the allegiance of morality. And you find that through... Well, through practice, mostly, I study the Bible, but there are other people who study the Quran, and there are some people who use the, the uh, Torah and the Talmud. It, it depends on your approach to God, what, what, where you learned it. It depends on what your mother taught you at her knee. It depends on, on the morality that is in the family all the time. We learn, we learn from the moment we are born, we learn how to be human beings. And so how, can you tell me what hemp, how, how hemp ties in with this? Well, hemp is only, uh, is only what the government calls marijuana. And it used to be, up until a few short years ago, it used to be the largest cash crop in the world. Now, our church looks upon that plant because of its many properties, its many benefits, medicinally, uh, the clothing that I'm wearing, not this, I'm sorry to say, but this is hemp. This is pure marijuana cloth, pure marijuana, made by a man named Alec Tilly. You've heard of the Tilly hats? Well, this one was a prototype of the hats that Alec Tilly is going to be making. Wow. It's pretty says, fancy. Looks pretty fancy, yeah. Yes. Well, he's going to be making, he made all the hats for Desert Storm. I hate to, hate to advertise Desert Storm because I am rather ashamed of, it, of that action, but he made all the hats for them, and now he's going to make all the hats for the OPP in, in, in Ontario, the Ontario Provincial Police. The, the idea of his making hats for these people is good. The idea of him making hats for these people out of hemp is even better, because it's, as long, it's the best cloth you can use. And that way our people will be dressed properly, the ones that represent us in the public. So we like the idea of Alec Kelly making things for the OPP out of hemp. Right, so I'm just, um, how does hemp exactly though tie into like your philosophy of like nonviolence and um, well, sounds like pacifist? I never want to get, get nasty, never. Like they just, they just cool out and listen to music or <laughs> look at the sunshine and smile or, or just enjoy each other's company. To us, it's a sacrament. To us, it's it's as it has been for many, many churches over many, many years. It's a very, very holy plant. It's a plant that came from the center of the tree, center of the Garden of Eden. It's the tree of life. And it is the tree of life. It makes your life longer. It makes your life better. It makes your life stronger in your body and in your soul. So for all those reasons, and for the, all the, the practical reasons like cloth and rope and paper and oil and food and 
all those other things that hemp is good for, mm -hmm. it's also a beautiful plant to look at. And it was in the Garden of Eden. Now, the Bible says, the Christian Bible, in Revelations, it says that in the end times, the tree of life will be available to those who obey God's laws. And so we preach God's laws. We preach thou shalt not kill. We preach thou shalt not steal. And we make every effort to be good in our lives, not only to other people, but to our environment. It's very important. So when it comes to the clothing we wear, if we can wear cotton, and we know that cotton creates 50% of the pollution in this world and the poison of, poisoning of our land in this world, we have to stop wearing cotton. But we don't want to. It's so nice. It feels so good. Yeah. So we don't want to. Yeah. We don't want to wear it's easier not to. plastic. Like, who would look good in plastic, for goodness <laughs> sake, right? So we don't want to do that. So we wear hemp. We wear a natural cloth that will last for years and years. You know, it used to be that we would buy things because they would last. And then we were taught to buy things because we could throw them away. Mm -hmm. And now we've got places where they fill the valleys between mountains with garbage. And now there's people starting to look at things that will last again. Again, that's why the church bought a Honda. I hate to admit it's a Canadian Honda, but still we bought a Honda because although it's six years old or seven years old, it looks like a new car and is expected to last for another eight or ten years and they don't want to waste a lot of money with me driving around in a car. So they buy something that lasts. The same thing when it comes to them paying for money for my clothing. They buy something that lasts and we want the rest of Canada to have the same opportunities. We want to see our paper money again made out of hemp. We want to see our paper books to be tree free. It's not enough that we have lots of trees. Those trees aren't even big enough to cut yet. And if they were, I've seen what the forestry company does to them. They just cut it all down. We don't have any clear pine to sell anymore. All we have is knotty pine to sell in very poor grades because we've gotten down to trees this size. I see, going past ha me in Hamilton, thousands and thousands of freight cars full of trees that are going down to the United States to be made into pulp. And I look at that and I think there goes our air conditioning system. The world's air conditioning system is more important than the paper that we use to print our newspapers on. That should be made out of hemp. Hemp makes dynamite second grade paper, makes dynamite toilet paper for not, from what I've been told. And I somehow think that when I remember that only God can make a tree, that somehow the uses that we put to the paper that we make from his trees, not a very good use, not, not very productive. So how are you enjoying Hempfest so far. Hempfest so Columbia far. is wonderful. Really? Just so where are you from, from then? I'm from Ontario. Oh, okay. Originally okay. from Saskatchewan, where you could see forever. But here, that's far enough. <laughs> so you having a good time here? Oh goodness, yes. And what right. what do you think will happen? What do you think this will accomplish? This festival? Do you have any kind of ideas, expectations? It's already accomplishing things. People know about it all across Canada and have come here from all across Canada. It's known about it. Then, then we'll take information back. I'm taking, as I said, I'm taking a documentary back to our people in, in Ontario. And from there, it will go all over the world, what's happening here in Ontario. I'm really hoping for a large turnout to show other people that in British Columbia, the people care about their trees, that the people care about their own personal lives, that they want to live healthier, stronger lives. I like that. I like the idea of being an emissary from another province. It's like being from another world and coming down and saying, take me to your leader. And here I am with all of the leaders in, in British Columbia. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, and well, it's wonderful to have you here. And uh, if I don't know if we're, we're going to be able to do this, but if anybody wants to contact your, your is it church? It's an actual yes. church? Oh, of course. We're registered in British Columbia, as a matter of fact. Uh, maybe you didn't know that, but I, no. if you, if you, 
uh, turn your cameras off for just a second, or even if you don't want to turn your cameras off, I'll go over and get you a piece of paper that shows our certificate of incorporation. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was just wondering if people actually want to contact you. Is there like a, an address or anything? Here? Or I'm, in, I'm in, in Hamilton. And if people want to contact me in Hamilton, I'm at 329 Wentworth Street North, Hamilton, Ontario, L. 8L5W1. If you want to contact me, if you have a policeman busting in your front door and you want to talk to me, my number is 416-529-9289. And if you want to fax me something, you can fax me at 416 Five two one one eight zero oh, four. Call first, so we can turn on the machine. <laughs> okay, that's great. And you, you, you know a lot of things. You could be really helpful in situations like that. Well, we've been spending a lot of time in the courts, and the best teachers in the world are the judges and the crown prosecutors in our courts. And so we have learned to respond legally and properly to the court's charges. So when we are issued an invitation to dance with the crown in front of the judge, we ask them to play a waltz. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for coming to interview us. I've had a good time. Thank you again. God bless you. Like that. Hey, how we back? And when you clone, the branches get closer and the product gets the, the plant gets more powerful. And then the more you clone it, the more powerful it gets. We've got plants that are just about maybe five eighths of an inch in the I'll see if I can find that picture. There was a picture of us in here, I think, for a long time.